Council is going to come up and release the pledge. sensory box. I have some students that have sensory needs like um, squishy type balls or balls that are ridged and if they hold those while they're doing reading or another activity it helps to calm them and then they can do their reading. Kyler's project was for wrestling gear. He got headgear and knee pads for his wrestlers. A lot of times some of his students can't afford to pay for those items and the school doesn't have enough of those so we created a project so that any student that wanted to participate in wrestling this year would have the gear that they needed, even if they couldn't afford to pay for it themselves. And then um, next year, we're hoping he needs to get some new wrestling shoes to help just enhance his program there at the middle school. So we're looking forward to that next year. Thank you, Kathy, for all your work, and Tyler, too. Spotlight on Mentone. Yes, hi, I'm Randy Doms. I'm the principal here at Mentone. I've seen a lot of Bulldogs out in the crowd. It's good to see all of you. Uh, we have a few groups we'd like to recognize uh, this evening, and we're going to start with our student council. And so, uh, this is Rock from the student council. Go ahead, come on up. We'll be there in just a sec. And then we'll come
we at Menton School this year, our student council has done a lot of things, and we're going to, each person is going to speak for just a short time and tell you some of the things, and then we're going to recognize all of our, all of our members. Thank you guys. Thank you. 
Each classroom has a drawer for students to recognize the kindness of, of others. They will be added to a kindness wall of fame. We are also getting ready for the health fair, which has rescheduled to May 7th. Hey, looking ahead, we will be recognized by Riley Children's Hospital on May 3rd. They, their representative will come to Mentone School to represent us with a Riley license plate, which is a copy of the Riley wagon we raised money for the business. We will be adding names of our kindness wall of fame to recognize the kind spirit, spirit of students at Mentone Mental School. We plan to continue our kindness campaign into next year. The health, the health fair will be held on May 17th. We will be sending three students to leadership camp at Manchester University in July to a council and the year of the school. Yeah, I would like to recognize our student council representatives at this time. And Nash and our student council. First is Nash Bowes, our president. Ms. Grady Morardi is our vice president. Daylon Buzzer is our secretary. William Allot, Jasmine Fuller, I stand up to her. Isaiah Holt, Hardy Hayes, Caitlin Thruckle. Guys, if you're in the audience, come on up, please. Noah Allot, Ryland Thompson, Parker Adamson, Carrington Kraft. Brayden Knoll, Kelly Pope, Tanner Plenty, this can be spread out so they can see how Parker Van Dusen, we have a couple others who aren't here, and I'd like to thank a couple of these kids who just, oh, Sorry, my own Ruby Wright in my own class. <laughs> Sorry about that. Ruby Wright. Um, a couple of these kids stepped in tonight when somebody wasn't going to be here. Just as not being sure now, but it's stuck in here. I find out. I'm sorry. Um, they stepped in, but they kind of gave you an, uh, just a little mirror of what we've done this year. And I just want to say that they worked really hard. And I feel like this has been a great year for student council, but. We have a lot of staff in the building. The teachers have helped a lot. Our administrators, um, our kitchen staff have helped, our office staff. So a lot of people have done this. But most of all, we have a lot of parents who get up early and bring their kids. But every child in the school, we've had fundraisers, the little kids who brought in their pennies for Jar Wars. It's the spirit of Mentone School. These are our leaders who led it, but it's the spirit of Mentone School. So ladies and gentlemen, this is our student council, and also give a round of applause just for our kids at Mentone School. I would like to introduce our school, and so Mrs. Sellers, Mrs. Cody, you guys. Come up. The spell will took place, I want to say, in the fall winter. It was a little exciting as uh, due to weather conditions. Uh, we made some changes and things, but I'll let Mrs. Cody and Mrs. Sellers talk about that. So, uh, spell will come up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It runs, we start right after school starts, and then we run until almost Thanksgiving. And this year, um, our competition that is hosted at Wabash, we actually were in the middle of an ice storm during our competition, and Wabash didn't have an alternative date, so our competition was just completely canceled. And we were upset about it, it kind of was a bummer to work so hard. We had had one practice competition against Akron, but otherwise the kids were just that was going to be the end of it. So we um, emailed with some other schools and we set up to have a competition here at Mentone. We were able to host that. So we had our own competition here and we came in third with that. So they worked really hard and it ended up being pushed back a few weeks. So they had to study extra long and remember their work. So they did a great job for that. 
Um, tonight we have Harvey Hayes with us, Christian Del Rio, Lindsay Peterson, and sorry, sorry, and Bradley. <laughs> I remember your last name. Um, and at competition that we hosted here, Christian had a perfect round, so he spelled all seven words correctly. And Lindsay had a near perfect round, so she spelled six out of seven words correctly. So congratulations. So we didn't technically get a B that year. Uh, 2016-17, we got an A. 
2017-18, uh, just recently, uh, we did score a C. Now, I uh, felt bad about that because uh, one of the reasons I would think was uh, the testing format did change for us here at Valley, and students had to type. And uh, we had not went over typing as much as we probably should have. And so that was one thing just in terms of test taking skills, uh, something that we learned from there, specifically me. Uh, so we are working, if students complain about typing during computer lab class and things, we're doing that uh, and getting as much practice as possible just so students, because in their testing, they do need to type and things. So I think that was one, definitely one of the reasons. Uh, this year we're taking a new test. It's not I-STEP, you know, for the last 20 years of my career, I've been so ingrained with I-STEP, I-STEP, now it's I-LEARN. And so uh, that will be a new test that everyone across the state. Uh, so action steps taken this year, just a few things that we've done here. Uh, instructional expectations will continue to be clarified and monitored. Uh, those are important. Uh, our staff's conducting peer-to-peer -peer observations and have gained a lot of knowledge just from each other. Uh, kindergarten is refining their curriculum. Uh, third grade's implemented, worked really hard for implementing guided reading groups. Uh, we've been intentional about teaching typing and uh, emphasizing during students' computer lab time, uh, preparing students also for the new format uh, for the test that we'll be taking here next week. Uh, also, we continue to tighten curriculum maps, standard based report cards, that's district wide. Uh, the more clear we are about essential standards, what we're teaching, uh, the more intentional our instruction will be. So that's very important. Some of our school does work in very far back. Uh, so results just of uh, some of the grade level teams. And so um, here at Mentone, we use a lot of what we call formative assessment data. And that's when teachers uh, will go ahead, they'll uh, test students in an essential standard, they'll get a baseline of what students know, and then they teach from there. So for example, in kindergarten, uh, we started the year with 17% of our kindergarten students knowing their letters and sounds. In March, we're now at 95%. So that was one stat in kindergarten for me. We move on then first grade, and uh, it's kind of hard to see. I didn't know how I'd show up on a big screen here, but we have a lot of different groupings that you'll see really starting to take place in terms of what are some of the essential standards and things like subtraction, things like addition, uh, things of that nature. Uh, again, these are things that are used during success hours. We actually have a scheduled time uh, where students do interventions, uh, and uh, if they met that particular standard, they're rich. But we take that 30 minutes, 35 minutes, uh, where uh, uh, we don't do anything new, we go back and really hit some of those what we call power standards, those things that kids really need to know uh, during that time. We go into second grade then. Um, second grade, just another example of pre-test, post-test. Uh, we're keeping track of a lot of this at Excel. Uh, due to confidentiality, uh, we had to cut some of this out just because we don't want student names and things like that. But that gives you another point just in terms of what we're looking at. And the bottom line, parents, is what we're really looking at here are the essential, the most important things what do kids need to know, um, not only for their grade level, um, like for example in second grade, but what do those kids need to know in third grade? What do they need to know in fourth grade? And so we're really picking out those things that we feel are the most important things, along with our partners from Akron, and then really assessing those things and reteaching when necessary. Uh, third grade, we move forward, and actually you can see um, at the very top, it's kind of blurry and things, but just kind of the state standard and then just how our kids are doing. Um, in terms of when we test them first and then we do some intervention and you can see some scores starting to change from there. Uh, fourth grade, kind of the same thing. Here's an assessment where you can see um, right at first, here's how they're doing at the beginning. Uh, here's the second assessment, uh, the kids were retaught, and then actually the third assessment. This was division, uh, so that was one that was really, really important for students going into fifth grade. And then fifth grade, we've got just a variety of data points and things. Uh, this uh, particular standard was selecting, um, was selecting adding and subtraction fractions with unlike denominators. And you can see all the pre-test, post-test data as our fifth grade teachers are broken up down by classes, putting kids in bar graphs and doing that. And that's with every standard that, that we do uh, in terms of what's essential. Uh, so that's how we keep track of that in fifth grade. So where does Menton go next? Uh, what's the future direction? direction look like. A um, few goals for next year, we're intentionally um, including writing across the curriculum, uh, making sure students are used to reading and then responding in writing. That's, that's very, very important. Uh, utilizing our current quarterly testing results in a more meaningful way uh, and things, making sure that uh, when we've identified, you know, broad type kinds of things, breaking that down more to individual students and, and uh, across the kids. Uh, technology will be upgraded at Montone this summer. And so we're excited about that as things will be more visual for our students. 
Uh, teachers will, uh, we're working on them being trained, uh, a few teachers for PLTW and e-learners, and so we'd like to make sure our science curriculum is strong and continue to improve that. Uh, continue to refine our PLC process. Uh, we have a robotics uh, program. We had um, some kids to participate in that in the fall. We're trying to build that up right now on things, uh, along with our chess club and things. So that's uh, something we'll continue to build up. And then just continue to talk about grade level expectations, vertical alignment, report card assess assessments, et cetera. I think that's about it in terms of just general statements. Um, thank you all for coming. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Conlon. Downs, um, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Tiny Grimes, our director of curriculum, instruction, and assessment, to uh, come up and talk about the Teacher of the Year recognition. Motivation in and outside of the classroom that embodies lifelong learning. The four Teachers of the Year are also ones who express themselves in an engaging and articulate way. The building teachers of the year were selected last fall. Each candidate was then invited to complete a portfolio in accordance with the Indiana Teacher of the Year portfolio guidelines. Portfolio submission was a requirement to be considered for selection of to become Dallas School Corporation Teacher of the Year. Submitted portfolios were then evaluated by a committee comprised of a staff member from each school, an administrator, a school board member, and a community member. Using the rubric established by the Indiana Teacher of the Year program, scores were determined for each portfolio. The candidate with the portfolio receiving the highest cumulative score has been selected as the 2019 to the Valley School Corporation Teacher of the Year. His or her portfolio will be submitted to the Indiana Department of Education this summer, as he or she will be our nominee for the Indiana State Teacher of the Year. I would first like to thank our portfolio evaluators who spent several hours reading and reviewing each portfolio. If you are here this evening, please stand when I call your name so that you may be acknowledged. Thank you, Hillary Parker from Akron Elementary, Pam Sellers from Mentone Elementary, Shelly Engel from Tupacanoo Valley High School. Christy Mills, Administrator from Akron Elementary School. Butch Trope, our community member. And Lacey Wise, a member of the Board of Directors. Librarian and Teacher of the 
here for Akron Elementary School.
last week student council sent students to a rep assembly. And also the livestock team was second out of 24 teams and the people on, the, on that team were Shaylee Shriver, Sarah Tucker, Sydney Peterson, and Mallory Bowers. And then a uh, district leadership contest in FFAs uh, this Thursday, and where 22 kids are going on that. The academic team has a competition tomorrow night. Uh, last Saturday was a coding competition, which it went okay. And then uh, Jeremy Gagnon and I completed in the state welding competition. Great job, guys. Appreciate the updates and all the efforts everybody's fighting uh, there at the high school. Good job. Uh, that's everything for Spotlight. Good luck. Spotlight on the Valley. We will now move into the business portion of the meeting. Right. So any items from the visitors this evening that would like to speak to the board? Alright. We're going to move on to the approval of the consent agenda. <coughs> and many of the kids want to leave. Uh, you're welcome to leave. Uh, 
once they picked their country, they then had to do research on it. Um, every student in my class wrote a two-page paper on the problems in that country and why they are food insecure. Uh, very simply, we do a lot of, uh, here in America, we try to raise food to send to other countries, uh, and things of that sort. My students were focusing on what in that country uh, is the problem and how do we solve it. Okay? So those countries are not dependent upon other countries to help them. Okay? And it ranges from everything from jobs to uh, health care uh, to education, uh, all of those things. Uh, so we had, like I said, every student in the class had to write a two-page paper. And then I gave the option to any of the kids in there if they wanted to go more in-depth with that paper and write about the problem and their solution, uh, that they could do that. Uh, and we had a few kids do that. Uh, we had two of them that were submitted. If you're not at the school board meeting, you better get there. <laughs> uh, we had two students uh, who submitted their paper to Purdue University and are selected uh, to go down to the World Food Prize in Purdue and appear in a couple of weeks. Uh, it takes place on a Thursday evening. Uh, they bring in people from, uh, the majority of them are from the Food Science Department at Purdue University uh, uh, to go over. Our kids are going to have, to, our two students that are going have to do a presentation on the country that they picked, the problem, and what uh, they came up with their solution uh, for. Uh, I just talked to Mr. Bowers, he's the one who introduced it to me. Uh, he said that I think that there was around 80 papers submitted. Um, and at the top 10 of those uh, will get selected and to go to the National World Food Prize in Iowa. Uh, I think that that's in the beginning of the fall semester. So uh, we had, like I said, we have two students, that is Mallory Bowers and Sarah Kelly. Uh, I think both went through Mentone here uh, that are freshmen that are trying to get out. So uh, my 20 years of teaching, this is one of most intriguing, exciting things that I think I've ever done in class. Uh, the kids at the beginning were kind of wishy-washy about it, uh, but once they got into it, uh, I think they really got onto it. Really cool. I don't know if there's any other questions. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. I appreciate the opportunity to share your This was a new experience. Yeah. One other thing I'll add is they, they do their presentations on Thursday night. Uh, they spend the night there. And the next following day, they spend the entire day on um, Purdue's campus, mostly in their food research uh, facilities. Uh, Purdue University has had three Nobel Food Prize winners. Uh, they'll get to meet with some of those people and talk to them. So uh, they're going to see the upper echelon people of the food industry here in the United States. And the people can talk to them. Uh, thank you. Thank you.
here a second. Uh, the school board has been provided to reconcile the bank statement and monthly financial report of funds for the month of March 2019. In summary, our receipts and disbursements for March 2019 are total receipts for all funds $1,494,238.95. Total disbursements for all funds $1,595,000. $925.46. Financial report. Thank you. Well, the old business. Number one, approval of school board policy changes, section two. I had uh, provided uh, the board last month with some changes within the, the uh, policy of section two. Um, we're taking all of the assistant superintendent um, as uh, that recognition within all of board policy out. Um, as we go through section by section, we re, uh, reordered the uh, moment of silence, Pledge of Allegiance, roll call, uh, coming board meetings within section 2.4. Um, within section 2.5, we revised and included the Indiana School Boards Association Conference. Um, within that part, we've taken out the uh, National School Boards Association or the American Association of School Administrators National Conference taking that out of policy. Uh, in 2.7, we've taken uh, North Central Association of Colleges and Schools. That has been renamed to Advanced Ed. We've added the Indiana Small and Rural Schools Association, the Indiana Association of School Business Officials as organizations that we belong to. Um, our legal counsel is Lewis Kappas. It's not Lewis, but Nick Evans. That's been revised. And then we pulled out a per diem for uh, board members at special meetings, uh, that compensation uh, is, is, will be no longer. Uh, we've also talked about and pulled out or changed, excuse me, the uh, complimentary tickets for the, the sectional from two per individual to one, and then we've updated the chain of command uh, on board docks uh, as it's currently uh, updated. So those are the submissions that uh, I would ask for. A motion to approve the changes. Your second. Second. All in favor, state by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, state by saying no. Number two. Uh, number two, our administrators had uh, provided updated student handbooks, staff, athletic athletic handbooks for the 2019. Goes back for your approval at this point. Uh, those are at the elementary, middle school, and high school levels. Okay. Do I hear a motion for, for the approval of the revisions of the new books? Adam, I would like to pull the THS uh, student handbook just for further review to the next one. Okay. okay. So uh, are we going to table uh, the entire number two of my lab?
two. Uh, looking at uh, proposing these changes within the school board uh, policy handbook in section three, eliminating the, the national meetings um, section and changing that to just a conference, Indiana Public School Superintendents Association State Conference, the Indiana School Boards Association State Conference each year. Uh, within that, we talked about changing the uh, complimentary tickets from two to, to one uh, for activities or events uh, that come from the athletic department. Also looking at uh, our corporation credit cards. Uh, we currently have two credit cards. Uh, one is in my name, one is in uh, Jessica McFarland's name, corporation treasurer, um, or I'm sorry, Todd Glenn uh, is the second one. We have a third card now uh, in the corporation treasurer's name. That is signed out by uh, administrators or staff members. Uh, we've changed the language here uh, to include all three of those in terms of the approval process and how expenditures uh, are received back in. So I provided the, the updated uh, information there. I pulled out the assistant superintendent uh, section there within the uh, credit card portion also. Uh, so those are questions that uh, if you have any questions on that we can talk about those uh, within physicals uh, there was a there was a mandatory statute in there for uh, administrators to, uh, to to have a physical and that that has to be changed uh, it's, a, it's an option for administrators and no cost to the administrator uh, within section 3.2 that was all for the assistant superintendent so we eliminated that entire section and then these next three sections are for principals assistant principal and the athletic director and that once again deals with the complimentary uh, tickets uh, going from two to one and then the correction with the, the physicals that, uh, that are offered to administrators so those are the as we go section by section here uh, through this year this is section three that uh, I'm asking you to review this month have any questions? Okay. Thanks, Mike. Well, I think that is all we have this evening, so we will adjourn and eat cake. <laughs> <laughs>